Authentication is very basic part of our application, but oftentimes we tend to use some third party SaaS tool to implement authentication in our application. I don't understand. Authentication should be the fundamental of your application and it should be easy to build. Today, I will show you how we can add authentication to your Next 3 application. We are not going to be using any other authentication service such as Superbase, AuthJS, or Firebase. We will be using MongoDB for database, JWT for token generation, and we will use Bcrypt for hashing our passwords. You don't want to miss this video because it has a lot of information packed in. So let's go to the screen and see how to build our authentication system in it's Next. Let's see what we are going to be building today. In this tutorial, we will be building a full stack authentication system with Next 3, MongoDB, and Tailwind CSS. We'll be creating the front end and the back end from the scratch. Prerequisite for this video, a starter file would be given in the video description link. So the starter file will include only the design of the login and registration page as well as the index page. It will not include the logic, but only the styles. So please do download or if you are using Git, then please clone it. Then I would assume you have a basic knowledge of Vue.js and Next.js, although you don't have to be pro in it, but a basic knowledge of both of these technologies are preferred. And then I will also expect you to have a basic knowledge of MongoDB. Preferably, you should know how the MongoDB work, how you can get the MongoDB database string. So all this basic stuff. So after completing this video, you will be able to create an authentication system with login register and logout functionality, a dashboard page that only accept the authenticated user. Therefore, we'll be creating an authorization system as well. We'll also be looking at how the JWT authentication works and we'll also create server side validation for the authenticated user. So there are a lot of things we'll be discussing in this video. So I want you to watch till the end. Being that said, let's get into the coding. So I assume you have already cloned the repository. After cloning, you will get these files. So let's go through them. So first thing, first thing you will find the app.view. In the app.view, we have a basic styles. Basically, we have added a few background colors, some text style. That's it. Nothing else. And then we have used the next page. So now all the files from the pages directory would be uh, rendered here. So let's go inside the pages. Inside the pages, we have total three pages. One is the index page where we just have written a welcome user. We'll fill this with the authenticated user later. And that is basically it. And we have added a logout button. Then we have our login page. Inside the login page, we have a form and we basically have only two input fields, username and passwords. And then we have a button to uh, trigger the login form. Then we have our register page. Inside the register page, we have total three input fields. The first one is email, second one is username, and the third one is password. We also have a button. Although we haven't write any uh, JavaScript so far, so this should be pretty self-explanatory. So these are all the pages we have, and we also have a directory called server. So if you don't have it, then please create a directory called server. So this is basically what you will get in the starter file. So let's run it. To run it, you can, if you are using yarn or npm, you can just use npm install and then npm run dev. If you're using yarn, then you can use yarn install and yarn dev. Uh, so in my case, I'm using bun. So if you don't know about bun, then I have a video for it. So please uh, check the i button somewhere here or in the description. So what I'll do, I'll just run bun install. And once our dependencies are installed, I'll be running bun dev. So as you can see, our dependencies are installed. Now what I'll do, I'll run bun dev. So it will basically start our application into the pro port 3000. So let me just open the browser. So if I open the browser, you see we have the index page. In the index page, we have welcome user and then the access your dashboard account from here and we have a, a basic logout button nothing else so now if i take you to the login page so this is how our login page looks i don't i know it's not super sexy but this is how it is then we have register page as well so in the register page you see we have three total input fields 
so uh, our user can be registered from here so this is basically what you will get in the starter file so what i'll do now i'll start off by installing some of the essential dependencies so the first dependency we'll be installing is nux server utils this package will help us connect to the mongodb and it also comes with mongoose inbuilt if you don't know mongoose is a odm for mongodb which which makes it easy to manipulate the mongodb uh, operations so we'll be installing that so let's install it using bun so i'll close uh, i'll terminate our current application and i'll run bun install or burn add the package name so it will take a few seconds and it would be installed so our server utilities package is now installed now the second package i'll be installing is the site base auth this package is basically how we can use to you know add the authentication functionality so let's go inside and let's see the installation process so in the installation as you can see we can install site based next auth so what i'll do i will copy this part i'll go back to my code editor and i'll run burn add and i'll just paste the code it should now add the auth package to our repository as you can see it is now installed now what i'll do i'll just simply run burn uh dev but for that but before that what i'll do i'll also install the mongoose because our next server utils needs the mongoose to be uh to be connected so i'll just add bun add mongoose so our mongoose is also added now before we run the application what i'll do i will just create a dot env file and i will add mongo i'll add an environment variable named mongodb mongodb uri so we'll basically paste our mongodb uri here since i have my mongodb installed in my local database local machine so i'll be just giving the local host local host mongodb database path but if you don't have what you can do our alternative would be to go, go use a mongodb atlas their free plan is quite generous it can get you started so basically mongodb atlas gives you gives you the database on the cloud so once you log in you will get your database connection stream you just need to add it here since i have it in my local machine so that is why i am using this and i'll also change the name to next auth so that if i have to check the database from uh, the cli i can just show you using the next auth so our mongodb uri is added now what we'll do we'll add the configuration of the package that we have installed to our next config file so as you can see we already have the tailwind css installed this is pretty basic so i have skipped this part this comes with the design of course and now we'll add the next server modules and the next auth so first thing uh, i'll do i'll add the next server utils so next server utils and the second thing i'll do i'll add the site base auth so to add that you have to go here you just, just copy this and then you can paste it here so that should be basically it now we have to add the configuration option for these two plugins so let's go to their respective documentation and see what they uh, what options they offers so the first one is quite simple so what i'll do i'll just copy this one and i'll paste it here inside that i will uh, add the mongodb uri so the mongodb uri is now added so the second thing what i'll do i will add the options for the next auth so let's go here and let's check let's go to the quick start and inside the quick start we already see the provider so let's copy this part so so this is for the authentication package uh, it takes object called provider and in the provider we are going to be giving auth js so what is auth.js actually auth.js is a javascript package which which provides us a different authentication services 
So you don't need to know all about this. What you need to know is that you just need to install the AuthJS package. It is required for the authentication. Basically, this package wraps this package and gives you the next magic. So let's do that. But first, what I'll do, I will install the the next auth so this package you see here next auth by sidebase it is highly dependent on uh, another package called next auth so here you see the crossover of next and next all which is a good thing we should see more of this uh, in the community so let's install that so i'll add burn add and then next auth and i'll also add the version number the version number is very important make sure you are using the version number given in the documentation all the documentation and the resource link would be in the description so please do check the description when you are starting this project so the version number is important so let's specify the version number here as well and let's press enter and what i'll do i'll zoom in our my workspace a little bit so that you can see it better so our next auth is also installed now what i'll do i will just clean it up a little bit and i'll just press save and uh, it seems so let's see what else do we need so i guess that is pretty much enough now now what i'll do i will run the application and hopefully we will not get error but if you know if we get error that is totally okay so let's run burn dev and it is running and we see uh, we already got a warning so the warning says that you have auth no origin so this package side based next auth it needs a origin of the of the authentication so we'll be adding that as well in a bit but before that what i want to know if is if my database is connected or not so let's do one thing let's reload the uh, let's reload the PS, um, vs code and see what happens so reload and there you go now we should see the mongodb connected message but we don't see it so let's rerun it again as you can see our mongodb uh spelling is not correct so i'll just paste the correct spelling i'll close it and then i will rerun our server again so as you can see mongodb is now connected which is a good thing so let's do one thing let's uh, minimize our terminal and let's do the setup for the authentication package since we are getting the auth no origin uh, warning so what i'll do i'll just add the origin options so the origin option is basically the base url so what i'll do i'll just add the auth uh, origin just i'll just remove the origin and i'll copy it i'll add it to the environment variable and i will give the origin so our origin is basically localhost 3000 precisely added by github copilot now let's save it and now let's run it again and hopefully now we'll not get that warning and as you can see we don't have that warning but now what you have to do we have to add the server side handler for this auth so let's do that so to do that what you have to do you have to create a catch all directory catch all route inside the server so let's do it let's go inside the server let's go inside the server let's create another directory called api inside that we'll create another directory called auth inside that we'll create catch all file all right so as you can see our catch all handler is created now we don't need the defined uh event handler so instead of what we need we need the next auth handler so let's import it import and let's import it from the auth and basically we will be importing the next auth handler so let's replace it with the next auth handler so inside the next auth handler we need to give uh, object options so here now we have to provide a secret so this secret would be used to encrypt um encrypt our jwt token so let's do one thing let's create another uh, variable and let's call it our auth underscore secret and basically we will create a hash so i'm just going to be lazy and i'm just be writing something totally unknown 
like that and let's save it and what i'll do i will add it to our runtime config so i'll do go to the next config and inside that i'll be uh, adding it right before the models so let's run runtime config inside the runtime config we need the auth secret and this would basically it so now we can access it through use runtime config composable so let's use that here so what i'll do i'll so what i'll do i'll call the use runtime config and this will basically give us the auth secret awesome now now that we have our secret setup now we need to give the authentication provider so authentication provider it takes an array and inside that you have to basically give all your authentication provider so in our case we are going to be using local provider so local provide we have to import the local provider from next auth so let's do that so import from next auth next auth slash provider slash credentials and this would basically be the credential provider so i'll check the spelling again yeah we have the credential provider so let's add it here so credential provider will also take its own options so let's see what it takes so we basically have to give a name and i'll just call it credentials and then it will also take the credentials and i'll just give it empty i'll i'll tell you why and then we have to we have to give our authorize option authorize function so authorize will check the credentials now in this particular function we have to uh, fetch our user from the database and we have to send the data so let's just add a comment to do and i'll write fetch user from database and just return return it and it will also give us the credentials so let's write credentials and it would be of type username and password so i'll just write username and password i don't know why i'm getting this expected a property authorized which is declared here so if you see a squiggly line here so what i'll do uh, this is basically a common error so what we'll do we will just add our ts expect error and that would be basically it i almost forgot for in in order to credential provider to work with the ssr we need to add a method called default and our error is, is expected because the type will not match so i'll just add i just slap the ts expect error so this is where we have to put our logic of fetching the data creating the jwt and then sending the user to the uh, to the next uh, line so now that we have our authorized functions let's go outside of the providers now we have to define a few more things so first thing is the session inside the session we are going to be setting the strategy as jwt and then after that we would be having some callbacks this is also very important so here we'll be uh we'll be intercepting the default behavior of the providers and we'll be intercepting with our data from the database so let's do that so the first callback would be the jwt so when the jwt gets created so basically we get the token and then we also get the user so we get only one way on options then we can destructure it we can get then token and user and also the account so what we'll basically do inside this callback is very simple we would be just if let's say the user exists let's say user exists so in that case uh, we will be assigning the token with the token and user i'll explain it in a bit so what is happening here so basically the how the default uh, provider works uh, is it only sends uh, the user uh, the token to the front end 
So what I want is basically I want my token as well as my user information in the same object. So that is why I'm intercepting the JWT and I am adding my user information as well. If you want something otherwise, then just don't just skip this uh, call back altogether. Your authentication will still be working. It's just that my personal preference so that I get the user information and then I can show it to the index page. All right, uh, so if the user doesn't exist, then what we'll do is basically we'll just return the token. And there you go. So we have our callback JWT token. Now we have our JWT callback. Now it's time to create another uh, callback call session. So let's do that. So session, I'll tell you why I'm creating this callback. So in this callback also we'll get the session as well as the token. So here, so inside the session dot user, what I'll do, I will add my token as well as the session dot user. So let's add these two things session dot user and token and then we have to return it so let's return the session so as you can see now we are intercepting the sessions as well so what is happening here so basically whenever uh, you use the authentication whenever you have the middleware in the front end your session you basically the front end package makes a call to get the session so what is happening is in the session payload we are getting the users and inside the users we are also putting our token as well so this is what we are doing basically so if you don't watch this video then you will not be able to understand then you will tell me what have you wrote so this is why we have uh, written uh, defined these two callbacks jwt and the session so yeah that is pretty much it in terms of the server configuration and now we are good to start so let's save it. Uh, let's give our application a restart just in case. And let's uh, see what happened. All right. So what I'll do, I'll go to my application, localhost 3000. And as you can see, we have the, uh, we have our page. So what I'll do, so this package that you that we are using site based next auth. So it basically gives you a, inbuilt middleware which checks if the user is logged in uh, so what i'll do i'll go inside the page and index and then i will just add the middleware to add a middleware in next three it's quite easy you need to define the page meta inside the page meta you can add your middleware so our middleware name is auth as you can see you're already getting the autocomplete now let's save it and let's go and let's refresh and as you can see we have a page that we have not designed where is this coming from this is coming from the package next auth right so site base next auth uses next auth and this particular page is coming from next auth we don't want that we have our own login page so how do we integrate our login page and not you not have to use this pre-built page because i don't want to use this why would i use that right so what i'll do i will go inside my server route i'll go inside the catch all next auth handler and here i will define the page and inside the page inside the page i'll give the sign in page as slash login so now our login now we have our own login page so if your page is in some subdirectory then give that particular path so let's save it let's go inside let's refresh it and as you can see uh, we have a dummy authenticated data so let's clear our site data and see what happens so i'm go i'm going to go inside the application inside the application i'm just going to click on clear site data and now let's refresh the page and as you can see we have our login page so now 
we have to get these two data we have to send it to our server handler and basically we'll receive that username and password right here we have to make a database call we have to match if our user and password matches with the user in our database and then we'll basically uh if all that is true then we'll log in the user otherwise the user will see a error but before we do that we need to have some user in our database now it is time to create a mongodb mongodb mongoose schema and insert a user using the register route so what i'll do i'll go inside the server folder and in there i will create another directory named models so inside the models i uh, will create another file called user user.ts so inside this folder inside this file i will define my user schema so let's import the schema for mongoose and now let's basically roll with it so our user schema would be new schema and what we'll have we'll have our email and the email would be of type string and it would obviously be required it will obviously be unique so i'll just add all this and i'll make it a uh, trim is we do we have trim yeah and then we'll also make it lowercase so even if you are putting a uh, email in uppercase or if you have a capitalized email it will automatically be converted to a lowercase email so we'll not have all those silly errors so now that we have a basic validation of our email now let's do the same for the username although i guess when we have the email we don't need the username but anyway i'm just going to roll with it so i'll just give type string and it will also be unique it will also be required it will also be lowercase so yeah now that we have it now let's add the password so the password uh, will add some more validation so it would obviously be type string and we'll not add the trim because i don't know if we should add it because stream is going to be cutting the uh, prefix uh, space and the end space so some people might want to add the space in their password so i'm not going to dictate their decision instead i'm just going to remove it and i'm going to add a length and length should be eight or else we are going to be showing them an error password should at least be eight characters long that is it basically now let's uh, create our model export const and our user would be equal to let's import uh, the model function would be model and this would be basically uh, uh, this would be basically our user schema that is it inside the model let's write the key and our schema so our key and the schema are added now since we are using typescript it is a good idea to also add the type so let's uh, do that i'll be just adding the type so let's do export interface user document extends to the document form mongodb and inside that basically we'll be adding all our types and now that we have that we can then just pass it to here use a document pretty neat now that we have our schema now what i'll do i'll create a server endpoint where we'll hit to register the user so inside our api we have auth now inside the auth i can create another uh, route name uh, register you can call it anything you want you can even call it sign up no one is stopping you right so now that we have our defined 
uh, event handler and also I forgot this should be a post route so I'll just add a suffix called post.ts which makes this route as a post route so let's yeah so let's save it and I hope we are there already so let's do one thing now let's go to our register folder let's see what we have we have the form and we have the register button so what i will do i will add a form state variable i'll call it form i'll give it ref inside the ref i will just add email i just like to do it like this way so that i can just send the form dot data and inside the form we'll first we'll have the email then the second thing will have the username the third thing will have the password so there you go now let's add a v model to bind our variable so it would be form dot email then for the username it would be sorry v model form dot uh, username and then the last would be v model and it would be form dot password so once we have that what i'll do i will add a event handler to our form i'll call it submit and we'll also prevent the default behavior and i'll just name the function handle form submit or you can call it handle register whatever you like so async function and handle form submit it will not have anything so basically we'll register our user right here so before we do that what i would like to do is i would just like to print out our uh, our form dot value and let's save it let's go inside register we have our register here since we are here what i would like to do is i would like to make the email e uppercase otherwise it looks just odd to me and i don't want to be cancelled in the javascript role so let's just change it so now we have email let's just um write something chai that null.net oh sorry chai at null.net and i'll also add chahid and chahid as password let's add and see we have our data which is enough to send it to our route and get back the uh and register the user so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to uh make a request to the register the post route so how can we make a request so you recall we have a composable in next called use fetch so inside the use fetch uh, you will get the auto completion of all your routes so we are interested in api slash auth slash register so we'll hit this route and we'll also be giving the method as post right we don't need to give any uh any headers so what i'll do instead i will give the json header but you don't need to give it because it was already does it for you so instead what i'll do i'll just give uh the form body and let's see what happens it is a it is indeed a promise so uh we have to add a await and i would like to wrap it inside a try catch block so that i can catch all the error catch and e and e should be any i don't i know any is not good but in this case just let, we're just testing it so let's just roll with it okay so we have a console as well and so let's 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 refresh let's refresh let's fill our form with a fake form filler and uh, why it is okay so let's do one thing let me just make the first uh, first input field of type email so that we just get our nice and cozy email filler so now i'll click on register and it should make a request to the register route and as you can see we have a response back from our server now we are sending 
the JSON and we are getting the response. Now we have to get those response, sorry, get this payload inside our server and we have to save it in our MongoDB database. So uh, let's let's do one thing since we are here, since we already have a try catch block, why not add a loading state so that user cannot just click multiple times so as you can see i'm clicking multiple time and the request is being sent multiple time which is not a good thing so what i'll do i will add another state reference called is loading i'll set the ref to false and inside the try there is loading value would be true and then inside out uh, when the request is done we'll set it to false so now what i'll do i will make this button disable disabled and add the is loading i'll also add some dynamic classes based on that so class and then i will add uh, bg I'll, ju I'll just make the opacity less so opacity opacity would be 50 and cursor not allowed if the is loading is on i don't know if the cursor not allowed is existing tailwind okay it exists so that is good now let's save it and let's see what happens so i'm going to click refresh i'm going to fill the form i'm going to click on register and as you can see i am i'll i'm still able to make the register button work maybe our request is too fast that's why so let's do one thing let's uh let's just roll with it let's let me just run the application again let's run the application again and let's refresh let's and as you can see we already have the uh, you already have the uh a loading state our request is so fast that you are not able to see it but once we uh, add the mongodb query you will able to see that as well so let's now that we have our front end ready let's go to the back end and let's see how we can register the user so the first thing we'll do we need the we need to capture the body so let's get the body and let's say a wet and we have to then call the function read body utility and we have to pass the event now we'll get the body so what i'll do i'll just return the body and see what happens let's uh let's clear all this let's uh, make a register request and as you can see we are getting the result as we have sent here so i'll just add a basic validation so i will uh, i'll basically write if body body dot email doesn't exist or username or password doesn't exist so what i'll do i will just throw and i'll create an error i'll just give uh status code status code as 400 and status message bad request and the message would be missing required fields so i'm going to do one thing i'm going to just uh, reload the page i'll just make a fake form request and let, let me just make it empty and let's try to do the register as you can see now we have the error so this is how you um this is how you handle the error in uh in next server routes although it's not a perfect way there are more there are more there are more professional way of doing it as uh, the next server utils provide you with the zord validation but we are not going to do that in this particular video in this video i guess email username and password is just enough to you know understand the authentication part so we don't need all these so now that we have our username email and password let's do one thing let's create a user inside inside uh, our database so let's call the user then let's call create let's call body and i will await for it i will also um i'll also uh, assign it to the user variable and i'll send it but 
before we do that we need to make sure that we are hashing we are creating the hash out of the password otherwise if you store a naked password in your database my friend you are screwed so what we'll do we'll install the jwt package and we will hash the password since we are creating an authentication package that is supposed to be used in production so let's make it production grade so what i'll do i'll install the jwt package so uh, let's do that let's terminate our application and let's add bun uh, add json web token that's it let's run it the json web token would be needed uh, for us to create the authentication token but we also need to hash our password so for that we need the bcrypt package so bcrypt package will help us uh, hash our password so that no third party bad actor can access our database even if they access the database they don't get to our password so let's install it and bcrypt is installed and let's run yarn not yarn dev bun dev so basically what i will do now i will import the bcrypt import bcrypt form so as you can see we have a squiggly line and bcrypt type is not installed so let's add its types as well so i'm going to terminate the terminal again and i'll add burn add d as in depth dependency and the types of bcrypt so let's add that and our error should go let's check our package.json and uh, let's check do we have bcrypt yes we have bcrypt since we have this error and we have already installed it so what i'll do i'll just reload my window and i'll see if it works so let's run burn dev again and our bcrypt is working no more squiggly red line so now let's do one thing let's grab the password let's add hashed password and let's call our bcrypt dot so inside the bcrypt dot hash the first parameter to take is the digest so in our case it is body dot password and we also need the salt now how do we generate the salt round so let's just create the salt from the bcrypt itself so i'll just write bcrypt dot gen salt and i'll just give 10 here as a salt round so this is a async function what we have to do we have to wait and we can wait here as well but i don't like it so what i'll do i'll just separate the salt generation process so let's call it salt and we'll just give the salt here now we have our hashed password so what i'll do i will add it inside the create and i will add the i'll override the password as hashed password pretty neat and clean now we have an error that um cannot find the model bcrypt live dot node now that's a problem that's a particular problem with bun i know because bcrypt uses some node related um api in the in the back so that is why it is not running so i'll just look for the solution quickly and i want you to also see how i when you get the error how to get to a particular solution so let's search bcrypt burn error can we use bcrypt all right so as you can see this is the same error we are getting and i exactly know it is related to the burn so it is an open error what we can do and it is not working it is not working it is not working okay so someone says uh it works if you install it with the 
with the npm package manager but it won't work if you have added it with the bun and big clip i don't really sure with that solution if i want to go if i want to go with the npm install big clip then what's the point of using the bun right so let's try to dig deeper and let's see run post install script in parallel what is it uh is it something related to it i don't think so so as you can see that there are two separate bugs here the install path will be fixed by this particular uh pr bun install isn't running the post install script to compile this dependency as i have said this has some dependency that needs to be compiled and burn does not do that so i guess then for the sake of tutorial we have to ditch burn and we have to use yarn again so let's it quite it is quite embarrassing to do that because it doesn't support it yet so let's just go back to yarn or npm and let's uh, yeah let's do that it is quite embarrassing guys so let's do yarn and yeah uh, it will basically if you run the yarn command it will install the dependency and then we can just run yarn dev so let's wait for it since you are waiting what i want you to do i want you to comment what you like the most about this tutorial or what feedback do you have for me guys i'm trying hard to make it full time to youtube so please show us some support and please do subscribe leave us a comment even if you have even if you don't have anything in your mind just put something in the comment right and also don't forget to like the video and subscribe the channel all right our packages are now installed let's do one thing yarn dev now we should not have the big crypt error anymore so let's revise what we're doing in the register route we are getting the payload we are checking if we have all our necessary data if not we are just throwing an error so this is how you throw an error in next three if you don't know and then we are we are generating a salt using the bcrypt package then we are generating the, uh, the hash password and we are then uh, overriding the naked password with the hash password and now we are saving it to the database and we are sending the user back to the uh, to the front end so before we do that what i'll do i will also remove the password from the response that's not a good thing to send the password so what i'll do password and i'll make it undefined which will do the job so let's save it let's go back let's go back to the register route again let's clear our terminal let's put a random thing and let's uh, let's copy it so that we can maybe use it later for uh, login so let's click on register and as you can see we have something what is it all right so as you know if you just destructured the you just add the user here the user is not your user object it has a whole lot of prototypes function from the user class so what you have to do you have to call uh, object or maybe i don't know the exact uh exact uh what do you call it the exact path to get the the whole document so it might be the document i'm not sure let let let's try something else user uh sorry user dot dot underscore slash doc how do i get the documents is there any two json yes exactly so there is the two object that is exactly what we need so we are getting the two object and we are setting the password to undefined which is good enough let's save let's uh let's refresh let's add another user let's click on register and now we should have our registered email username and our user id which is cool now the problem is if i click on register again it will give us a duplicate error which is not a problem actually we already have added the validation i forgot that so i 
I thought I'll just add a validation right here. So we don't need to do that because we already have the validation. Yeah, so now that we have our register part completed, what I'll do, I will now uh, make the login request. So once the registration is done, what I want you to do, I want to, uh, let's go back to our register page and there we have our register logic. So once we are done with that, what we'll do, we'll use the use router composable to push the user to uh, to the login page. So let's send them to the login page and we'll also, yeah, that is basically it. Let's, let's save it and let's uh, refresh our page again. Let's add the email as shahid and the username also as shahid and let's try to click on register register and you're in the login page that means you have successfully registered now you can add your awesome uh toast message you can add all the confetti you want but i am not going to do this for this tutorial so let's just do the login page yeah so to do the login page we have to go inside uh inside our catch all route and inside the authorize basically now we have to work uh with uh with with the credentials so the first thing we are going to do we are going to add uh user and then i'm going to add user dot find on and i'm going to be writing the username as the credential dot username so we are going to be finding the user by the username and we are uh basically now let's say if we have a user if we don't have a user let's do one thing let's just throw a throw create error it will create an error and i'll set the status code as 401 which means unauthenticated or unauthorized and just send the status message now if the user exits so what i will do now i will use the big crypt con uh, compare to uh you know uh, compare my password so let's create a variable called is valid and i'm going to do uh, await and then i'm going to import the big crypt on top of the file so import big crypt from big crypt and now let's call the big crypt dot compare and what are we going to compare we are going to be compared data or buffer with the encrypted data so we'll basically do credentials password and we're going to compare it with our hash password why are we getting this error we are getting this error because we have not awaited for our user so now let's uh let's do let's check if it is valid if it is not valid we'll just check the negative first so now uh we'll just send this error so if the user exists what we will do we will just send the user to object and we will just undefine the password because i don't want my password to be passed around like other fields so that is done and hopefully now we can uh, log into the application so yeah that should pretty much work so what i'm doing here let, let me rephrase all this uh, logic so first thing i am finding the user based on the username right you can do it for email you can do it for phone number you can do it for whatever you want since you are creating the application you are the sole owner of it and if the user doesn't exist we are just going to throw 401 then if the user exists in that case we are going to compare the hashed password so let me tell you something so if you are hashing something then you cannot go back to its previous state so 
think of it as an input and output you have a input string and then you after hashing you get output string so you cannot you never unhash the hashed string to the to its previous value so what you can do you can just compare it and the algorithm will tell you if it is the same or not right so this is what we're doing we're comparing the naked password with our hashed password if it is valid if it is not valid then we are sending the same error because we don't want the user to know if the password is not matching but the username is matching so in that case they will just ddos our system so yeah so we are just sending this uh, unauthorized error if the user exists we are converting it to object and we are omitting the password from that pay from that response and then the callbacks are getting triggered the user is getting uh, combined with the token for same for the session user so that is being done now let's save it and now let's go back to our login page and so let's do one thing let's go to our login page and now we will be uh doing the login so to do that first what i'll do i will create a form state so form and it would be ref inside the ref it would have the username and the password so basically i am going to bind all of those with our form dot username and i'll do the same for the for the form dot password so our form is now binded now what i'm going to do i'm going to create a function a thing function name handle login and i'm going to add an event handler to my form so submit dot prevent handle login now this should pretty much work so what i'll do now i will basically so now what i'll do basically i will import the use auth composable i will use the use auth composable this will give me the sign in method and what i'll do now i will basically do a try catch i always do that this is a good practice for error handling now what i'll do i will await do i have to at all check so i'll do the sign in what does the sign in take it first takes the supported providers so our providers would be credentials second option would be our data so our data would be the just the form dot value and is it a promise yes it is a promise uh, so what will happen once we have that let's try to get the response let's see what happens then let's just console.log response maybe we'll destructure it and we'll get data or success i don't know let's just say the response and let's print it so now that we have our basic logic done let's go back to our page and i remember i have a user named jahid so let's just add jahid let's log in and yeah i guess we are already logged in as i can see uh so let's let's go let's try to go inside the documentation and as you can see uh we are already logged in if you are not logged in then you you would not be able to view this page so now we have to add a logic if it goes through then we need to redirect to the page so let's do that so let's add our use router and then i'll just add push and i always like to use the name route it's just my toxic trait so let's do that and let's just remove the rest we don't need that and yeah let's save it and let's try to go to login and we are in the login so what i want is if the user is already logged in so in that case i should not be in this page i should be redirected to the uh to the dashboard so to do that there are two three ways that you can do so first thing is you can create a middleware and then you can assign the middleware so i'm just going to do that but also what you can do this 
use auth composable will also give you a data so this data would be the response from the uh, from the login it will basically have your user data authenticated data so you can watch for this particular reference if it has the data then you can just use the use router to send that user to the index page but we are going to be using the middleware so let's create a middleware directory so middleware inside the middleware i'm going to write guest and uh, this is a nice name i guess so let's uh let's check so i'll take status form not form use auth so i'll get the status from the use auth so the status status contains whether it is authenticated or unauthenticated so what i'll check if 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 the status equal to is it a reference it is a ref so i have to check for the value is the status dot ref is authenticated so in that case what i'll do i will navigate to the index we can also use the name route of course why not so index so if the status is authenticated then we'll not be able to proceed to that page it would take you from the uh, login page to the dashboard so let's yeah let's add that to our login page so inside the login i'm going to write define uh page page meta inside the page meta let's add middleware and the middleware would be guest awesome let's save it now let's let's refresh and as you can see it is not working so why is that so let's investigate uh so what i'll do i'll just console.log the status yeah as you can see it is authenticated so if it is authenticated uh we have to return do we have to return let's check and yeah so that was the problem now you cannot go back to the login page without logging out so now we have to print the username here so let's do that uh, now let's try to access the user data let's remove the console statement and let's go to the index and now let's use our use auth composable use auth and let's try to access the data and let's just dump the data here welcome to welcome json <laughs> so as you can see we have user inside the user we have email so what i'll do i'll just go inside user and then inside the user i'm just going to do the email or maybe username why not username right so let's let's do one thing as any and username and as you can see now we have our authenticated user no matter how many time you refresh you would still be authenticated anyway so now that we have our authentication page now let's do the logout as well so just below the data what i'll do i'll create a function function handle logout and inside that i'll just get the logout from do we have the sign out here yes sign out then i'll just add the sign out here is it a promise yes it is a promise so i'll avoid for it and i'll also make this function uh, a sync one then in the button i will add a click handler and i'll handle the logout simple now let's save it and now let's refresh and now let's click on logout and you are logged out awesome isn't it so now let's uh, try to check it so now uh, what i'll do i'll go to register and i'll just add uh, some random email called next and i'll also add the 
username as Nuxt, and then I'll click on register. You'll click on register. You would be registered in instantly, and then you'll be redirected to the login page. And yes, in between, you can add all the cosmetic changes you want. No one is stopping you. You'll get that repository link in the description. So let's try to log in with that particular username. So the username is Nuxt, and the password is password. And let's try to log in. Once you log in, you are in that dashboard. Very yeah. awesome. Now you have created your own authentication system without using any third party authentication provider. Although we are using packages, but these are primitive packages. This doesn't, you don't have to pay for your authenticated users. This also has its own drawback. Like if something happens to your data, if something someone hacks your database it is totally up to you how secure you can make your uh, authentication flow so this is how we have created a full stack authentication system in nuxt using mongodb and all the basic tools so i hope after watching this video now you can also create your own authentication system from scratch if you have any comment or question or feedback then you can either comment it on the comment section or you can join our discord server and you can ask me directly this is jahim signing off i'll meet you in the next one bye